Hey everybody, we're at El Dorado Park Golf Course today. It is now, it's July 2016, and I'm here with Michael, who you guys saw, uh, and I'll put the link in the description, you guys saw Michael go, uh, really, you did really well. How did yeah. you feel about your experience in the Long Beach match play? I liked it, it was my first time being in that match play. Never played in a match play before, so um, good, good experience, a lot of pressure. And uh, it was fun. Great format, huh? Oh, yeah. Match play. Yeah. Did you make any, because uh, people say this evens the field out somewhat, did you make any like big numbers where where it was good that it was match play since you could just yeah. be like, okay, that only counts as losing one hole? Yeah, actually, like I didn't have to worry about throwing up a big number and having it affecting my score. Well, like I could throw up a big number, we could still have the hole. So mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. It's like little, you never know. Yeah, not as stressful. It's a little different. Yeah. So, um, Today, Michael and I, I'm, I'm getting ready for a tournament that I have coming up in a week and a half, and uh, so is Michael, so, uh, and they're both kind of short length tournaments where you have to start scoring well pretty quickly, so today we're just going to play stroke play here on the back nine, uh, and join us. Alright guys, so here it is, starting off on the 10th hole, this is a par 5, and Michael is uh, I had just watched him play in the Long Beach match play where he played really awesome. So it was fun to uh, watch him play for a while in that and then uh, go up and play against him. But we're going to play stroke play here on the back nine. So it's uh, pretty early. It's still about about 5.45 in the morning. You can see how dark it is still. So that was uh, my first Today on the course Today I'm using uh, this company, driver. Grenade. Uh, it's called Bomb Tech. I'm using their driver. Which I hit down the right hand side of the fairway and then I have this three wood. You can see I'm using this uh, kind of the Callaway Truvis ball. It's like a soccer ball kind of looking thing. It actually is uh, I like it quite a bit. I'm not really going to put it into like super competition mode yet but I do like the ball. That was a block out to the right so this is my third shot on this par five and I have a tree to go over and you can see that was well fat very well fat and uh, yeah bad shot bad shot then uh, I was but luckily I was short of that bunker but definitely overdid that caught that a little with uh, just too much swing just put too much swing into that one it bounced on the green and jumped over. All right, so if you guys have seen my pitching prescription video, and if you've been watching my channel at all recently, you'll know how bad I used to be at these chips. But watch my back shoulder, that'd be my right shoulder. Just keep moving. And uh, this is the thing that really changes handicaps. Because that would have been a 10-footer that I would have felt good about before, and now it's a 3-footer. Or actually, less than 3-footer. So that's Michael chipping, and he has that remaining for par after having to chop out of the trees and just playing the whole the little sloppy. So we par? both have par putts. No. Yeah. I have a bogey putt, which I made. That was a good stroke there. And then um, Michael has this putt for his par. And uh, blocked that one, and that one's not dead either. But uh, nonchalant of that one into the hole. All right, so after one hole, we're both one over par. And that one, I kind of played that hole really badly. Uh, normally, that would have been a double bogey, but because of my improved pitching, I'm now tied with Michael. Michael hit a snap hook into the left woods, and then I have, with his three wood, and then I have three wood out as well. Great tempo on that one. Not the best move down on the ball, but it was the tempo that kept that thing pretty well in the center. So it slid all the way from the left-hand side of the fairway to the middle. And now I have a 9-iron from 138 yards. That's one of the best swings I've made in my whole golf career. Just the balance of it was really great. We're going to watch it again here in slight slow-mo, like 25%. What I really like about it is the finish there. See how I come up and I'm totally balanced. I'm not falling backwards or anything else. Made a great divot too. That ball is sitting about right there. You can see it. See my yellow Truvis ball there sitting about nine feet away, maybe eight feet away. And Michael's chipping for his birdie, but blasted well by 
Caught that a little thin there off of that scrubby area. Now he's putting for par and misses it, so that puts Michael to two over after two. He is a very good golfer, high level golfer, so uh, yeah, Michael's two over after two, and this is me for birdie. Caught that one right in the center of the face and just had the line right enough to keep it up and in the hole. So I go back to even par, and Michael's at two over par. I hit a really good drive. You can see that I kind of, after I swung, I stepped back a little bit, a la Nicholas. I don't really like doing that very much. I'd rather stay balanced on my left see, foot. See, for me, that one, and you can kind of see it, it felt like I fell back here. That's yeah. just because I was really trying to rotate and not. But I am just short of the, I'm on the front fringe. Perfect line of the hole. Michael tugged this left just a little bit, but pin high. So here's my putt for, for birdie from off the fringe. It's through that fringe and then up the hill. So I was factoring all that in and thought I had to pound it. But ended up leaving myself about four feet for par. Yeah, yeah, about four feet for, for par. And here's Michael putting for his birdie. And he's got a lot of meat left on his bone as well. So Michael putting for his par. And uh, yeah, that's the bogey train is just uh, rolling very hard for Mike right now. My putt for par, you could see maybe Brendan a tiny here, bit of diesel in that one. Michael's three over. And we have the hardest hole in the course here. How do you play this hole, Michael? Come out here. How do you play this hole since the uh, toughest hole for you, this one? Yeah, I, I favor the left, I mean the right side. Mm -hmm. And if I draw it, perfect. If not, then I'm safe in the water. So, you know, it's a par hole. So my ball's away, and that one is up the right-hand side. Did not hit it extremely well, and then hit a tree and fell down. So I have a long way to go and over some trees to get to the green. Michael hit a one-handed shot that snapped Whoa, both mama. left, but he oh, hit it so solidly that he's past that water that I always talk All about. All right, in walking out to our shots. I hit a tree, but I'm sitting safe. Michael hit a hook, but he hit it solid enough that it went past the water. My theory, Michael, is that uh, Michael tomorrow has a lesson with George from uh, GG Swing Tips. And my theory is that you're kind of nervous about your lesson tomorrow and you're trying to have a perfect lower body move right now, huh? Yeah. You're thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you don't want uh, to go to your lesson because it's been a couple months? Yeah, a couple months. A couple months, you don't want to go to your lesson and have your coach say that you've gone backwards or whatever, so really working on his move yeah so what are you working on right now what's what's in your brain uh, just hinging and holding and turning like George wants me to do hinging and holding in, in the backswing yeah just so hinging on the way back and then and then holding, holding it yeah holding yep. and turning and like my second drive which I did there was perfect and usually when I don't do that I hook it mm -hmm. or drop yep. kick it I don't film second drives though so <laughs> you guys didn't see that one <laughs> Because everybody's pretty good at the second one. Yeah, but that was good. Yeah, you see, your second drive there, you hit that um, exactly where Brian hit it in, in your last match against him. Yeah. And, oh. yeah. He was a long hitter, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He had a real uh, great posture. I think, he liked, I think he liked to imitate Jason Day or something. Like exactly. Yeah, like, that's what I said in my video. Yeah. Very reminiscent of Jason Day. I, I saw it the most when he hit his iron shot short on 12. And uh, his posture was so stiff, and he had almost he had that exact like imitation Jason Day style with yeah. his pitching. So worked out well for him. So I have about 190 yards up over those trees because I hit a tree and fell way back. But you can see my ball is on that little bit of a mound, and it kind of made a launching ramp for it. And I hit a beautiful high fade here. You can see how straight and uh, even that divot is from side to side. And that's the result there. So 
And then Michael, after uh, two shots, hit it over the green. So this is Michael for his birdie from off the green, chip, electing to chip here. So he has that remaining for his par. And he put it in. So Michael stays at uh, plus three after making his first part of the day. This is me for birdie. I'm trying to get back that bogey that I just made, but Whoa. some uh, golf psychologist said, don't think of it as getting one back. You know, that bogey you made, that's over and done with. There's nothing you can do about the pass. Just play each shot for itself. So uh, I make a par on that hard hole, and that's going to that's gonna gain on any on most fields that you play even in the long beach open that they do here par is a very worthwhile score on that hole so then i hit another fade this time down the right hand side of the the fairway here with my three wood and then michael hit another snap hook he's really uh kind of getting up in his head about his lower body so this is from 130 yards out actually about 125 yards out and I have, I was trying to hit a, uh, a little less than normal pitching wedge. It was in a bad lie, and I came up a bit on it, and I totally thinned it. Here's Michael pitching for his birdie. He's a really great pitcher of the ball, and he uses the fringes around here really nicely. And that's my ball all the way back there, all the way back there after thinning it. But uh, I accidentally shut the camera off right before I, I, I pitched it. I hit a great pitch. It went to this spot. So this is me for a par. All right, Brendan, let's make this. Let's check out the tempo of this stroke. Really good ball position. And a great accelerating stroke that just barely lift in. Thank you. Putting that Truvis ball actually feels pretty good. So here goes Michael trying to get some kind of game going with his driver. And he does hit a great drive there. Good. Really good. Down the middle. Uh, looking with some concern at it, but it's, it's probably just because he's relishing actually hitting a good drive for the uh, first time this day. And then I have three wood. Uh, I had seen that Patrick Harrington thing, uh, special on Golf Channel where he says that on super tree-lined holes like this, you want to play it low so that you you don't hit it over the trees and deep in the woods. If you play it low, it'll just get knocked down by the trees and you won't go deep into them. So I'm trying to put some uh, philosophy into my uh, into my game, mental game. So, uh, But I didn't hit a great shot and I have 190 yards into this hole that really I should only have about 150. Hit a four iron because I wanted to keep it low, choked up on it a little bit, and I blocked it just pin high to the right. Here's Michael from about 135 yards. But you can see he's uh, looking dejected there. He put it into the ground and felt just short of the green. Okay, I'm pin high to the right. Michael is short. Uh, he hit a fat. And um, Michael, when I, was watching you, when I was watching you in the match play, the thing that I liked that you really did during that tournament that I don't see a lot of other kids around here doing as much is you really played the uh, the fringe as well when you were chipping mm -hmm. yeah like most of the kids around here are so scared of the Kikuya getting like a weird like bounce where it just grabs it and stops it that um, you see everybody like flopping everything around here what's your what's your like strategy like when you're because you're not like you're not afraid to play it into there to let it kill it. Mm -hmm. What's your strategy with that? Well, during the match play, those greens were really fast, and um, if I ever got a good bounce off it, it'd kill it enough to where it release enough to where it's just so trickling. Hard. Just yeah. Just trickling instead of just screaming. Yeah, because usually when you play it, uh, one of those chip shots, you try to be aggressive, it'll take a big bounce and or. It won't check, and then you have a, even a longer putt than yeah. you did chipping. Yeah. And then that's why it does come up short on just on the green. But yeah, it's like when you're playing that shot, you have to accept that you might get a really crazy bad bounce. Yeah. But percentages-wise, you're gonna do better to to kill it into the uh, to the uh, fringe than landing it all the way on the green. All right, so here's Michael chipping. He needs to get up and down for birdie here. 
had some good action and it actually lipped out, but then it uh, ran on quite a ways. So I'm putting from the fringe. You can see uh, the course is in really great shape right now. There's some uh, big tournaments coming up soon. But I left that pretty short there, and I'm going to have about 12 feet left for par because I just did not hit that aggressively enough. All right, Michael for his par after just running on and on into that low area. And Michael moves to four over now. But like I'll say, no leaf lead is safe when you golf like I do. So I really am just trying to keep my nose down and play just one shot at a time. So here's a 12 footer that I need to make because I need every stroke I can get from a good player. Cool spin effect there. And I was stoked right. to make that, so I gave it the slow fist bump. I thought I blocked that and, so far uh, out to the move right, on. but it hit it slow enough for it to take it. Keep, uh, All right, so going here. into the 15th hole, 15, uh, 16, no, the 16th hole. Yeah, going into, six, going into the 16th hole, Michael is a embarrassing four over par, and I'm uh, one over par after that great putt. The one really good thing I could say about using this uh, soccer ball style Callaway Truvis ball is that when you chip it, uh, seeing the dots really helps you see the break for your upcoming putt, you know? So that's a bonus. All right, going on to the 16th hole. Here's Michael. He had just hit a good drive, and then exactly like he that. just hit another one. Very, very good drive down the middle. He's been working really hard in his lower body, and that time he actually did what he wanted to do. And I hit another bleeding fade that actually worked out really nicely. So it's uh, it was kind of my miss, but I was I was working and it, it was a small one. I was working in nicely. All right, you can see there I'm working harder with my wedges on keeping my left wrist more more feeling like one piece through the through the hitting area. And did an all right job. Got it on the green, but not not very close to the hole. That was bad. Kind of got wrapped up in my technique and didn't really get wrapped up in how hard I needed to hit it. And then here's Michael. And, oh, he just landed it pin oh, high and green, it jumped. Dude. We did what? Yeah. I did what you Past the green Michael and he's going to be really in a bad over spot. over the back of this green. He landed it probably two steps past pin high, uh, but is like seriously punished for it now. And I'm right in the center of the green. We'll see. You better make something happen quick, Michael. Yeah, running out of golf holes. So you can see after being in a totally perfect spot off the tee, he's now in a really tough up and down situation here. Michael using but like I fringes. said, Michael uses these fringes so nicely. Ran out a little bit. A lot of people would see, carry that all the way to the, the hole, being Michael's worried about the kikuya, but to the right of that got burned out by that edge there. Ball, see, that's where he landed. Went out to there. So and that's where he jumped to. Really punished. All right, so here's my putt for Birdie walking out to it. It's like a... Uh, nine step putt seven or nine step putt something like that so somewhere between 21 and 27 feet trying to put a good weight on this really trying to mentally stay Louder. in the focus of hitting every shot for what it's worth but i left that pretty far short that's going to be about yeah just about three feet that's that phil mickelson circle michael makes another bogey really having a tough day with the short putts here and uh, so me, great to make that putt. Really great to make that putt. I was proud of myself there. After Michael missed his, I told him this, this hole, 16 at El Dorado in Long Beach, has really bad, it's the kind of like a haunted hole as far as short putts. But it made me feel good that he missed his because it kind of like the beast was fed and it didn't need to, to catch my ass either. Michael's now five over. Five over. It was an embarrassing four over. What would you call a five over? Uh, when was the last time you've been five over par? Uh, after like six, ho after <laughs> seven holes. It's been, a, it's been a while. But that's what makes, uh, not to toot our own horn here, but that's what makes Be Better Golf different than other channels. The good, the bad, and the ugly. You see it all here. Anyway, so uh, yeah, and I'm remain at one over. All right, 17th hole, I have a four-stroke lead here. Made what I thought was pretty good impact, but I took a, a short club and I choked down on it. 
and that was kind of, kind of right on line, but just weak. So this is like 148 yards to this hole. Michael made a good swing there. Same thing, just in the center of the green, just a little left of the flag. So this uh, chip shot, when I was talking about the pitching prescription, that was before, this would, this is such a hard shot for me before, really hard. So I'm thinking of keeping my rear shoulder moving, and I'm also thinking about my landing spot. I'm gonna actually try to land this short of the green. And that was oh, go, really, go, really go, well go. done. Oh, that was good. That yeah, was I was really shot. thrilled by that. So I have that remaining for par after a really great pitch. Michael makes his par and stays at five over. And this is to keep a four stroke lead going into the last hole. Kid did it. Yeah, that was a great up and down. All right, a couple good pars for Michael. All right, a couple good pars for Michael and I on that par three. Uh, great up and down for me. That's all thanks to Monty and our uh, pitching prescription video, which is here. Um, so Michael is still five over, and I'm one over. But when you golf like I do, no lead is safe. So match play, I would have had him a couple holes ago. But stroke play, we're still uh, to the bitter end. Now, if I win, Michael's promised me a $100 gift card to his dad's Italian restaurant. So I got that to play for. All right, so here's Michael teeing off on the par five, 18th hole, the last hole of our match. Great miss. I only say it was a miss because it was one He hit it right down the middle, even though he had that one-handed follow-through. And then here's my uh, last drive of the day with the grenade driver. And uh, just trying to tee up, kind of line up down the middle and kind of start it out right and bring it back, but it just went right going right, and it's actually felt really horrible. I did a couple of, on the range, the first time I hit this, I hit a couple slices, or one slice, and then that one is like, it just felt like a toy. How far do you have, Michael? Uh, 197 to the pin, the front 173. I'm going to go with a six iron. Is there anything short of the green here? Yeah, there's a lot water oh okay okay i didn't know that um all right so so michael has 197 to the to the hole and 83 to the green 73, 73 to the green so this has to cover 173 and eagle would be nice oh, yeah. birdie minimum all right michael's approach shot looking to get somewhere either on or really up close near the green I missed today is that full draw is yeah. really weird. All right, short game time. You haven't really played since the match play, huh? I have, but I'm just working on my short game. Oh, okay, right. I, I haven't even touched my You haven't really played any holes of golf yeah. since then? Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, if Michael doesn't make a birdie, if he doesn't get up and down from there, I get free garlic bread from the, from the restaurant <laughs> and free water with ice. with ice and free napkins and ketchup if I get a sandwich. All kinds of freebies. <laughs> All right, 81. All right, so here I am. I have about 80 yards with my 60 degree sandwich. And uh, I just came and just put it into the ground a little bit. Took a monster divot. That's when I'm running to fix it. It's, it's embarrassing. All right, guys, I'm on the green, but 27 feet away, 35 feet away, something like that. Michael is chipping for for eagle after he's here at this par five and two. Really, really doesn't want to get shut out birdie-wise. I had one on the second hole, yeah, that, that's right. All right, so. Stop. That's a great shot. You guys will see that in a second. How many, how far away is that? Three feet. That's in that wiggler zone. No, not even three feet. Like, like I, I call that 22 inches, maybe. All right, so Michael's looking pretty good for birdie there. So with a four-stroke lead, I need, uh, I have uh, basically 
would have to do something really stupid to to mess this up. But that was a that was a great line, a great putt. So uh, maybe I'm getting better. It's good to shoot a shoot one over and uh, beat a pretty good player. All right, one over for me. This is Michael's putt for a birdie here, crucial one. All right, guys, that's it. So we just finished. Michael, you had one birdie. One birdie. <laughs> you had what, score-wise? Oh, uh, four over. So Michael shot a 40. I shot a 37. Yep. And uh, so I win. So I, uh, unfortunately, no, I don't actually get a, uh, a gift card. But I do get a uh, free water, free ketchup, yeah. free hot pepper. And napkins, you said. Napkins, Parmesan cheese. Yeah. Freebie? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so imagine all that at his uh, dad's Italian restaurant. Um, you didn't play well today. No. What do you attribute that to? Not to put you on the spot. I mean, it's just uh, one round doesn't really matter. But uh, actually, uh, yeah, I didn't hit it bad. But yeah. later through the holes, I figured out what I was doing, and um, my main problem is not hinging. I mean, I'm not hinging, and I'm releasing on the way back. I'm reaching on the way down instead oh, okay. of holding and turning. Yeah. And that's what causes a drop kick or a snap hook. And, so you think if you do this kind of Genka style move with a super rotation of the, of the lower body, it's important to add a holding move yeah. to that? You can't do this and... Oh, yeah, I can't. Oh, okay. I can't. Okay. That's, that's different than what Monty teaches, but Monty mm -hmm. doesn't teach this kind of super rotation. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, like in golf, things have to go together. The thing that I always notice when I play against, uh, or against or with good players is that if they play a bad round, it's just like, it's just like a giggle and whatever, and it's on to the next thing. Especially, like if it's not like in a tournament or anything, they really don't care. And then if you play with a bad golfer and they have a bad round, it's like they're kicking the dog, they're screaming at everybody, it ruins their whole week. So uh, that's a, something that you can really take from uh, from a good player. Thanks everybody for watching this video and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.